Insurance firms, I'm going to share exactly how we're generating unlimited insurance leads using Google Ads and how we're adding unlimited insurance leads using Google Ads for our clients. So in this video, I'm going to share you a number of strategies that we're using right now in 2023 going into 2024 to generate an unhealthy amount of insurance leads and new policy sales using Google ads. So I'm going to share with you in this video a number of ideas that are not being used right now. Some of the major errors that I have found auditing dozens of Google ads accounts for insurance firms. At the end of this video, if you implement just 50% of what I'm going to show you, you're going to see a massive increase in policy sales, lead volume and qualified customers. This means that your teams are going to be speaking to people who actually want to go ahead. They're going to be engaging with prospects that actually want to move forward and also being able to generate you eyeballs, website visitors to an online journey. If it's not a call center, you know, for people that actually want to receive a quote, get a quote online and also make a purchase. So this is extremely powerful. And if you just follow literally 50% of this, you are going to see a big increase in where you're at the moment. Quick introduction. Who are we? So our firm, GrowMyInsurance.com is the leading marketing agency that works solely with insurance firms and that implements a complete omni-channel, multiple touchpoint marketing system with a decade of insurance experience inside sales and marketing myself directly for insurance. Okay, so we've got the experience. We know exactly, you know, where people are going wrong. We've audited dozens of accounts. We've got dozens of clients that we implement this for. Now, the great thing about these Google Ads strategies that I'm going to share here is that it has near infinite scale and it can be used across multiple different verticals so from car insurance, home insurance, travel breakdown, maybe motor accessories, gap insurance, tire alloy, liability, personal business insurance and many many more. So these ideas are universal, many of which I've just mentioned there we have done and seen huge success with. Here's my website. Feel free to check it out. I'll leave all the links in the description. Also, this is our, my LinkedIn. Feel free to drop me a connection or message if you like. Also do post daily content. So it might be something valuable for you guys to drop me a connection. These same strategies that I'm going to share with you today in this video has helped our client Martin grow his insurance firm and helped him add over 500 plus highly qualified leads and extremely qualified customers that pay him thousands of pounds for insurance policies. Martin, before Martin implemented these ideas and the methods that we're going to share with you today, he was relying heavily on buying leads from third party lead providers, maybe hockey transfers, trying to build his insurance firm just off the back of referrals and people that are recommended. Main thing here is that this resulted in, in a few things. One, his staff members were arguing with customers, you know, trying to convince them just to go through the data capture and get the quote and that basically having to explain each and every time to the prospect what the hell is going on. You know, they're calling these prospects. Hi, you just submitted your details through this random website that's now sold on the information to us. Do you want a quote? And the person's being bombarded with calls, you know, the main thing as well, you're having to compete and Martin was having to compete with three, four other insurance firms calling that exact lead at the same time as him. And over a period of time of using our systems, Martin now has an abundance of customers coming directly to his firm, a huge amount of organic search volume and also now marketing campaigns that target and speak ideal to his customers so but just through the efforts and the whole omni-channel approach has hugely increased just his organic traffic and people that now just come to him direct the implementation of this is is him now being able to bring on new staff members and expand his team grow his insurance firm and you know make an indent into the industry that he wants to be in so i want to address him why have you failed at this before you know why can't you seem to make this work because Google ads is nothing new. You know, you've probably ran ads. You're probably running ads at the moment. You've bidded on keywords and you might be seeing some success. Maybe you saw no success at all. Maybe you're currently running ads right now, but you're not getting the consistency you want. Maybe you've ran successful ads in the past and absolutely killed it. But just nowadays, you can't seem to get the return on investment that you want. Maybe you're currently running ads at a very high level. You know, five, 10, 20, 50,000 a month, but you just can't seem to push to the next level that you're looking for. Many people in the insurance industry have been fooled and you've probably heard this many, many times before. CPC is way too expensive. Google ads is only for the big players. Google ads is really expensive. All of these are completely false. You know, the biggest issue is that many people think the Google ads is just keywords. We'll put some keywords into here. We'll bid on it. If somebody searches it, they'll see our firm turn into a customer's happy days. This is not how it works. A keyword targeting is only half of what this platform can offer. When you add all the complex array of targeting options and targeting features, this platform is 
is so much more than just keywords. So let's dive in some of the key things that you could be looking to change, some key features and some real setting changes that you can actually make to make your Google Ads work for you. And the main thing, the one first thing I want to cover here is account structure. Account structure is one of the most important features of Google Ads. You know, many accounts we've audited always make the biggest mistake in the Google Ads rulebook to many campaigns. Now, here's why this is a problem. So one, you need to understand that the learnings and optimizations are made at the campaign level. You're limiting that campaign by one, the ad spend and also the search volume. You need to understand that the campaign is essentially the brain of that audience group and that theme type. So if you're having the same, essentially the same audiences, the same type of demographic in multiple different campaigns, then you're just limiting the amount of learnings and optimizations and the the data that that campaign can give you to get you better results. One of the biggest things as well is, is how keywords have changed with broad and phase matches and exact match and how they actually work now. It was different, completely different to 18 months ago. You'll find that you'll have multiple campaigns with essentially the same keywords in them. So if you're getting a lot of crossover, then you're just, you know, you've, you've got too many campaigns essentially. So look, the right way is just fewer campaigns. You know, structured campaigns and ad groups around audiences, theme types and volume. So a lot of you may have in the stuff that we have seen in the past gone for ad groups and campaigns that are designed around a specific keyword or around a specific group of keywords. The right way to do this is base it around audiences, common themes, and also volume. So here's a few questions we're asking ourselves when we're structuring campaigns, when we're looking to do this for clients, what are we doing? Questions we're asking is, is first, what is our ad spend? Because the campaign structure between five, six grand a month versus 25, 30, 50,000 a month is slightly different. We're also looking, you know, does the product have multiple audience types? So does the product we're on? offering an insurance for does it have multiple different audiences maybe this is like over 50s elderly people younger people we need to understand that also does this audience warrant its own volume you know what is the market size of this product and does this market have separate search themes now they're the questions that we're that we're asking ourselves so let me just explain so here's a quick diagram of maybe a campaign structure that we definitely we definitely wouldn't use okay and this is something where people would opt for too many Many campaigns let's just use life as the main product for the example and then these are all campaigns here some of the some of you would would opt for uh, a campaign for maybe a medical condition they'd opt for an additional campaign for an additional medical condition and they would also adopt for a different campaign for a different medical condition and then let's just say they would also do a campaign for people in their over 50s. They'd also do a campaign for people over 55, 60s, 70s and 80s. You can get the picture. The issue here is that essentially these are definitely within this group and this group. They are the same type of audience. So how we would structure this essentially and, and we bring this down. And again, I've added a few more examples here for life insurance. We would have just an over 50s campaign with multiple ad groups with age breakdowns. Medical conditions had one medical campaign split across different medical conditions. Now, there are some medical conditions that would warrant their own campaign, but I'm not going to explain that in this. Mortgages you know, is its own theme type within life insurance. You know, people looking for life insurance to cover their mortgage, which is completely different for people that be looking for life insurance for major medical conditions, for example. It warrants its own campaign, its own search volume. And then the same with the general terms, because life insurance has a lot of general terms. We would also be looking for top performing general terms that have high intent behind. Them. Just a very top down 30,000 foot view of how we would structure something over how a lot of other people would look to structure something. And then if we look at something, maybe you know, these were for, you know, accounts doing 30,000 per month, for example, then if we looked for something that would be less per month across something that would have a less of an audience. So that life insurance example, the reason I used that there is because it has such an incredibly high search volume and multiple different audience groups within that product. But if we look at something like a motor accessories, tire and alloy, that doesn't have a huge amount of search volume as as far as audience groups like the the search is are very generic across the audiences and so how we would do this uh, maybe an account spending 5k per month we would just split this across two campaigns we would have the search tire and alloy with some ad groups inside of it and then we'd also have a non-search we'd look to do something like a display performance max and we would also have tire and alloy within that we would also potentially in our non-search have our remarketing campaigns or we would also look to do an individual remarketing campaign depending on 
you know, the website history and how many search searches that have prior to us coming on board, for example. There's a number of ways to look at that, but you also have to understand, you know, what is the volume of this product and does it warrant its own campaign? Do we need to break this across into multiple different campaigns? The thing that we're always trying to do is how can we have less campaigns? Okay, that is the question we're trying to ask ourselves most of the time. A very important next step is campaign settings. Many people overlook this step, you know, but the settings you pick have a massive impact on the performance and the control of the account. So here are some of the settings we're using. Um, so it's just a very brief screenshot, but here's some of the major things we're looking at. The goals. This is where I see a lot of people go wrong. Now, you need to make sure that the tracking is correct. If you have a buy online journey, you need to make sure that it's tracking purchases, tracking value, sending that value back into Google Ads, tracking the policy number and a few other essential pieces of information that you might want to pull through. But the goals that you're selecting, you want to pick what you want to be achieved and to be tracked. So what I see a lot of the time is people just using uh, the, the account goal settings or they have leads, purchases, calls, app installs and a few whatever else they've got in there. And they haven't really got any structure in here. They go into here and there's like five or six different events. You want either purchases or you want leads. And if you're tracking calls as well, it's leads and calls. So if you're doing lead generation where people are submitting their information for a callback, wants to be leads. If you don't online purchases, then it wants to be purchases. And it's really as simple as that. If you're a call center, go for leads. If you buy online and it's heavily online customer journey to you know 90-85%, then go for purchases. The next objective here is the marketing objective. And it's the same as the goal. You want to pick the outcome that you want. Okay. So if it's sales, online purchases, you go for sales. If it's lead generation, then you go for leads. A lot of people would opt for sales on lead generation because they think the end goal, obviously the call center is to make sales, but the objective of the Google ads is to generate leads, not sales. So you would go for leads over sales. One question that we're asked quite often is networks and which are the most profitable networks. A lot, and in the past, we would have opted not to include Google search partners, but we have seen very good success recently uh, within the past year of using Google search partners. So we always opt for this to be clicked on just because we have found that it gets a cheaper lead, a cheaper cost per click, and also has some very high search intent behind it. So we would opt for having search partners. That is completely up to you, but personally, I would use that. Display network on its own. We would also make sure that we're not including this on our search campaigns. Now we do like the display network across maybe performance max or an individual campaign, just for the idea of that we're wanting this to be a search campaign. We're optimizing for searches, so we don't want to be on the display network for search. Now, locations is a very interesting one. The default recommended is presence or interest, people in regularly and or have shown interest in your target locations for a product that is being sold just specifically for insurance in one area. So we're going to use the UK, for example. We don't want to be advertising to people in other countries, even though we select UK, if we have this one here enabled, you will find that people who maybe have come on holiday here or people that have done some research into, you know, the, the UK area, but are not in the UK will start to see our ads. Obviously, we don't want that. So you need to go into locations, location options, drop down, and then people in regularly and or targeted locations. I've seen so many accounts spending 10,000 a month who have this on, who, who have thought, you know, we, we, we're not getting the type of customer that we want. And we just literally change this one setting and it instantly improves their results. So make sure to uh, check into that. The last one here is obviously your bidding. And there isn't one size fits all with this. There's so many different strategies you can employ. I would say 95% of the time, uh, nine times out of 10, we're optimizing for maximized conversions. We would put a target cost per acquisition on there usually once we have enough data and proof to say that it's working if you're starting from scratch i wouldn't add a cost per acquisition in because there's a lot of optimizations you'll need to make you don't want to restrict the account too much but you know once it's been running six months 12 months or even slightly less than that but you're seeing good results you can have a target cost per acquisition in there maximize conversions is like i said something that we're using nine times out of ten but maximize conversion value we would look to use if the campaign is running really well. In some instances, we would use maximized, um, maximized impression share. But again, that's very rare. Sometimes we do maximize clicks, depends if we're not getting the delivery that we want. But I would say nine times out of 10, we would look to do a maximized conversions. Again, this is not a one size fits all. The main key here is if whichever one you pick, whichever one you go for is to run with it, leave it minimum 30, 60 days. You don't want to be changing it every couple of days because you're not getting the results that you want. 
you either pick one and you leave with it and then you maybe make that change um, later on down the line. So if you're, if you're unsure what to use, to go with maximize conversions. That is the most regular one used, obviously, as long as you've got tracking codes and everything like that set up correctly. And one of the last features, and this is such a powerful feature that so many people don't understand about, and it's taking your competition's customers, you know, understanding how people buy. So one feature that many people don't know about is the ability to target people who have never been on your website, but have been on other businesses' websites or are using other websites that your customer might use. So for example, for travel insurance, we might want to target people who have shown interest on booking.com because these are people who are booking holidays, they're people that are booking uh, locations in other, in other places, they're booking hotels, they're booking rooms. So we want to start showing ads, products to these people about sort of travel insurance, for example. Let's just say you've got an, a car accessory, you've got a car insurance, but you're advertising to people that want to buy new cars. Then you might want to be able to target people and show your ads to people that are looking for car loans, maybe on Barclays, Halifax. These are just some examples that I've added in here. You know, for car loans, you want to just target people. with it. If this person has been on this website for car loans they're probably going to be interested in buying a new car which means they're going to need car insurance for new cars it's the same thing we'll use the car insurance for example you've got these huge aggregated websites that have millions of hits every single month you know go compare money supermarket compare the market um confused.com money supermarket for example then we just want to piggyback off the back of those customers if they're on those websites looking for car insurance then they're probably going to be looking for car insurance within 30 to 14 days, for example. We can just start to show ads to people that have been on those websites. This is an incredibly powerful feature. Obviously, when I under, when I say here, understanding how people buy, understanding what other websites your client might be using to then be able to show your ads to. If you're doing business insurance, you might want to be targeting people who are looking at, who are on uh, accounting software websites for example so it's really powerful you know you just got to sit down and think okay well, my customer how are they actually purchasing and then using this feature which is you know to be honest one of the most powerful features that we're using for clients at the moment and it is seeing just incredibly high and good results so if you're interested in in us implementing our strategies for you for your insurance firm on a complete paid on results basis you want us to help increase your quality increase volume of policy sales then reach out to us now this is for insurance firms so this service is for insurance firms with an already existing sales process you know insurance firms who have established teams in place and you know, already have systems processes in place but want to make them explode wants to get to the next level then this is for you this is done for you on a complete done for you basis our website growmyinsurance.com if you do want this document i will leave a link to it below but yeah appreciate watching this video i hope you found some massive value like subscribe do all that good youtube stuff appreciate you watching the video